Sports, man. Appreciate y'all for coming in and tuning in with me, man. Real quick, uh, I'm not going to be long. I just had a couple of things on my mind, uh, you know, because I was watching and listening to uh, Jason Whitlock's uh, podcast on his Jason Whitlock channel on YouTube. Uh, and he, you know, he had some interesting things to say about Stephen A. Smith. Some of the things I agree with, but I thought it was worth coming in here and, uh, at, at, you know, at least talking about it and doing a video about it, you know, because I think it's kind of important, um, you know, the role that Stephen A. Smith plays and, and you know, how people see him and how I think you you should see him, how you, how you look at him, man. Um, before we get started, uh, I'm, I'm going to play what Jason Whitlock said, but, you know, I just want to remind everybody, man, hit the like button on your way in if, uh, while you're watching. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, because a lot of people that watch the videos are not subscribed, you know, go ahead and subscribe, man, and, and you know, hang out with us and, you know, uh, catch most of these videos when they come out, man. Um, and and uh, a lot of people in the comment section as well, man, so I appreciate that as well. Um, but... Um, you know, I want to start off before I even get to Jason Whitlock's uh, commentary on Stephen A. Smith and how he feel like he's pretty much a sellout. You know, that's pretty much what he said. Um, uh, I, I, I kind of want to at least acknowledge what good journalism or good analysts or, uh, or what ESPN used to be and who I think the best analyst that ESPN ever had was Stuart Scott. Um, he was very professional. He was hip. Uh, he was articulate. Uh, he, you know, no nobody hated him. He didn't. He didn't come out and publicly hate players. You know, he just did his job, man, at a high level in, in a professional manner. And uh, I, I think there's still a lane for that. You can still be that guy. I, I, I don't understand with how ESPN when they first started catching fire with the debate shows and all of that stuff. And, you know, people's personalities started coming out really, you know, uh, you know, really bold. And, you know, and, and there's an audience for that as well. And I appreciated that a little bit at the beginning. But when your personality comes out so much to where you start to cross the line of professionalism or or uh, where it started going into personal opinions and personal vendettas, uh, for the players, I mean, I I really don't think it's any room for that. And um, Stuart Scott didn't cross that line, you know. So I I, I think, man, you know, I just want to give him, you know, a shout out, man, for 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 being who he was, man. God rest his soul. I mean, I I think the dude was uh, the standard, right? Uh, so now he's gone. Insert Stephen A. Smith, and he becomes the new standard at ESPN. Not only has he become the new standard, he's the highest paid analyst there. He's pretty much the face of uh, ESPN, and he said this much uh, out of his own mouth. He said, uh, "You know, I'm the face of ESPN. You know, uh, they're paying him like it. You know, thirteen, twelve million dollars a year. That's a lot for an analyst, and it's just not the entertainment factor." He provides a different service than just the entertainment factor. But I'll let Jason Woodlock uh uh say his part. I'll play that and then I'll come back and 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 we'll we'll get commentary and we'll talk about what Jason Woodlock had to say. I don't dislike Stephen A. Smith. I get what he's doing. But this is what you do, and this is what you sound like when you've been bought and paid for. People love to talk about who's a sellout, who's a sellout, who's not a sellout, who keeps it real. That's what selling out looks and is like. And I say that because Stephen A. Smith is not a doctor. He's not a scientist. He's a sports pontificator that got on TV and blasted this young man about a vaccine that Stephen A. Smith does not know anything about. Stephen A. Smith can have his opinion, but to sit on TV and call this boy, this young man, stupid because uh, he's sitting at the, hey, because Kyrie, I don't know what his religion is, but he's spiritual and believes in God. 
and he believes in God's design. And so that level of intelligence led Kyrie Irving to believe, oh, I'm not putting this vaccine in my perfectly healthy young body. And Steve, uh, you're going to compromise the championship and not take the vaccine. This is what selling out looks like. And y'all need to quit thinking that it's some certain color or, or it's uh, you got to be racist or you, you got to. Uh, oh, you got to be conservative to sell out. No, selling out is when they hand you a 12, 13 million dollar a year contract to say what you're told to say. Now, he said a lot, man. He said a mouthful, but you know, you you can probably ascertain what what he was talking about. This is this is coming from, you know, and this is just last week he did this uh video, but I, I guess what prompted him to um, you know, to talk about that is, you know, hindsight being 2020 which we're realizing the vaccine really didn't you know uh and the cdc has already come out and and admitted you know the vaccine's not stopping anybody from getting covid um people are still getting it you know it, it, the virus is mutating and, and and now it's turning into something else man so either we're just going to keep creating vaccines and getting vaccines for every variation to come out or we're just going to have to admit that a healthy person like an NBA superstar that is young is probably not going to be that affected by um and 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 for for someone to be on the sports world being that adamant where he's coming out and he's personally attacking a person uh of like Kyrie Irving for saying I'm not going to get it vax you have to wonder why he was so motivated to do that it had to be personal or it had to be something that hey look this is this is where we're going as a business and when i'm talking about espn and nba look we you know the nba lost a lot of money when the the quarantine first started you almost ho- lost the whole season they they scrambled it toward the end to get the bubble done you know to kind of recoup some of that money they lost and everyone that was against going into the bubble got a lot of uh, pushback from analysts like Stephen A. Smith and people at ESPN. So it was almost like, if and I'm, and I'm not saying this is exactly how it is, but I'm just thinking of it in my mind. The NBA and the ESPN, you know, they're kind of partners, right? And the NBA wanted uh, that bubble to happen in 2020. They wanted to be able to make that money and for it to work, everyone needed to be uh, sold uh, sold out or, or locked in or, or on board with it and a lot of the players wasn't right so how does the NBA handle that you know uh, you know, you can talk to the players association you, y'all can get together as a meeting and say look man uh, the owners are losing money we got an idea this you know I think this could work if we do a bubble blah 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 and a lot of players just wasn't with it so as a result of that they go to ESPN and say, "Look, uh, we need help," and that's what that's what ESPN's partnership is like. And they go to their face of their of their of their platform, Stephen A. Smith, and Stephen A. Smith, he's going to come after the players. You know, he's going to pretty much speak for the owners and ESPN because their interest is the money. If the players are not with it, we have to find some type of way. To push them in the corner to 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 being able to, to I guess be lockstep with the NBA and Stephen A. Smith is lockstep with the NBA and ESPN like he that, like he's not even hiding that fact I, I don't think he said anything since he's got that contract that is any uh, um, I, I don't that I, I don't think he said anything that wasn't lockstep with the league and ESPN like he's on he's a company man he's admitted that right he's gonna do what he's got to do to get his money right but that's like Whitlock said that's what that's the definition of selling out right it has nothing to do with race it's just that he's decided I'm going to be on the owner side I'm going to be on my my company side I'm a company man they pay me a healthy amount of money a year and that's what I'm going to do and it's dangerous right so um I they 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 kind of use Stephen A. Smith and some you know some of his other and 
people was gonna follow suits. Uh, Kendrick Perkins, Michael Will Brown, even even Jalen Rose now is 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 following his lead because they seen that that's how you get the money. That's how you get paid. ESPN made Stephen A. Smith the highest paid uh, analyst they have, and it's people that are way more talented than him, and it's people that's way more knowledgeable him in uh, certain sports in certain areas, and uh, even more entertaining. You know, uh, I think uh, Michael Wilbon and Corbin, you know, had the number one show on ESPN for a while with PTI, right? They're knowledgeable. They're good journalists. Uh, you know, they, they can they can do their thing, right? Um, but Stephen A. Smith was just doing something different, right? He was doing something different, and it was good for the league and good for the owners. Uh, Jalen Rose, when he first came out, he was very pro player because he was an ex player. He was very pro, pro player. He attacked uh, Skip Bayless for uh, some of the things he said, especially about the Chris Bosch thing. Like, you know, he went in them real hard. And that got Jalen Rose kind of demoted to, you know, a certain extent. You know, it kind of dropped him down because he was on a he was on a rocket when he first got the ESPN. He was a, a, a breath of fresh air. To see a player come out there and say, look, man, y'all not going to talk about these players like this, man. To, you know, get, show them some respect. Analyze the game, but show them some respect. You can't be walking around here calling a grown man Bosch Spice. You know, the, the, these are the type of things Jalen Rose was saying. But you've seen, ever since Stephen A. got that contract, you've seen Jalen Rose now follow uh, Stephen A.'s lead. So Jalen Rose do not disagree with Stephen A., as much as he used to disagree with Stephen A and Skip Bellis uh, when he first joined ESPN, he doesn't do that anymore. Um, and and Kendrick Perkins, he he's he, I mean, he's f- fresh out of the NBA, and he's following Stephen A like he's some mentee of him or something. You know, just following suit. I'm just gonna keep telling it like it is and slandering these uh, players, and you know, it's 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 us against the players, and I, it's it's just weird for me to see a former player act like that and fall in line with Stephen A. Smith, but that's his second career and he wants to climb the ladder, same as Jalen Rose, same as Will Bond, and they see, man, the way Stephen A. is doing it is the blueprint and ESPN want them to see that because we're, they're letting you know, look, as long as you're on our side, we're going to we're gonna give you what you want, right? And they see that's the blueprint and that's, and that's, and that's what it is, right? So um, they all... Uh, on one accord and on board with um, whatever the uh, the league wants and ESP want. And at that point, uh, getting the vaccine was a huge deal because a lot of money was on the line if they couldn't get that league going. And if people was thinking more like Kyrie Irving and Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Isaac and all of these people who didn't want the vax, um, it, it would have been it would have it wouldn't have been a good thing for the league. They wouldn't have been able to bring it back and and and, and make all that money and and uh, it was very important that everyone at ESPN was pushing it to the public because if, if you can sway the public op- opinion, then that gives you a lot of leverage, right? Uh, which leads me to the next thing that Stephen A. Smith has been pushing out there for about two or three years. The collective bargain agreement is coming up after this season and. Every I, I want to say ever since last year, I've been hearing Stephen A. Smith ever so often mention, oh, the owners are coming for y'all. Oh, the owners are going to eat y'all up in the CBA. Oh, this is not going to happen after the CBA. Uh, they got all this. Oh, they go kill y'all. Call it the Ben Simmons rule. Call it the Kyrie rule. Like all these things he's saying, um, it's, it's almost like he's foreshadowing something. And I want to know where he got the information that the owners was coming out to them, right? Where did he get the info, right? Um, who is he talking to? Um, and and why does he feel the need to go on national television and put it out there? Because if you was really for the players and you wanted to warn them, this would be something you would talk to them in private. You would cut, you would pull the president of the Players Association aside and say, hey, look, I'm going to give you a little nugget I've been hearing. Right. But the fact that you're doing it on national TV means two things, either one or two things, either either you think it's entertaining and good for ratings or you're on the owner side and you're getting this out there to condition the audience for what's to come. Because if it ever gets to the point where the owners are playing hardball and there's another lockout. Right. Stephen A. 
and his friends have already told you uh, at ESPN that this was coming and it's the player's fault. So when the lockout happens, all the people who want to watch basketball and who's dying for basketball are going to be putting pressure on the players and they're going to have scapegoats, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, John Wall. Hey, these guys wasn't playing, but still getting paid and X, Y, and Z. And it's y'all fault. And they're not going to have anybody on their side. It's just going to be the players and then the public owners, the big networks, the advertisers, they're all going to be on the side of the owners. Right. So he's conditioning everybody. Now, I, I'm going play, to play you a clip of, of, of just one of them. But there's several. If you just type it in, collective bargaining, or CBA, Stephen A. Smith, he's everywhere talking about how they're going to. I think just as, 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 as late as uh, a week ago, he's been talking about this. But this is during the season when, when, when this happened. I want you to listen to this. I know. I know. What you're looking at right now is not exactly compelling footage. I know that part of our job in the media is to provide you with interesting video. But here's my problem, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have I don't have any footage of John Wall playing basketball this season. Because none exists. I don't have any footage of Ben Simmons either. Because he hasn't played a single minute either. Not for the Philadelphia 76ers or the Brooklyn Nets. His teammate, Kyrie Irvin, we haven't seen near enough of him over the past few years either. He's been sitting more often than not. That is a fact. But all of them, every single one of them, are getting paid. John Wall just exercised his option for next season, $47 million. The second highest paid player in the National Basketball Association this year and, and next year. Hasn't played a minute. I know the Rockets have a lot to do with that. I know. I know that. One of their youth movement and all of this nonsense. But John Wall could have demanded to be on the court. He could have demanded to be traded. He could have raised holy hell and let everybody know. I really, really want to play. Call it the Ben Simmons rule. Call it the Kyrie rule. Hell, call it Ja rule. All right, do that. I don't care what the hell you call it. Just don't call me complaining when the owners push to put an end to this nonsense when the next collective bargaining nego uh, negotiations comes up. Because trust me, y'all, it's coming. And they're going to have all of this ammunition. It's not going to be good for the players. Trust me. He said, <laughs> he said trust them. It's not going to be good for the players. How he know? What insight he got, right? So, uh, for, first of all, that's nonsense, right? So he's using the example of John Wall, Ben Simmons, Kyrie Irving last year. Three examples, right? And so basically what he's saying is players are getting paid and they're not playing, right? And it's an issue around the NBA and that's going to cause the owners to whoop them up during the uh, negotiations, for the for the next CBA, so I guess he feels like that's a lot of evidence. Man, it's like five hundred dudes in the NBA. You got three examples. I mean, I know those are big players, but you got three examples, and and those examples really don't even hold weight. Like the Rockets are, they they traded for John Wall. They got him there. They they was I, I they bought in John Wall, Demarcus Cousins, uh, because they was trying to um, make Harden stay there. They was trying to give him somebody that, that convinced him to stay there. Harden still left, and when Harden left, the Rockets was like, "Hey, man, we go, we 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 go uh, release Demarcus Cousins, right? And then we go sit John Wall, and we go play these young guys." That was the Rockets' decision to sit sit John Wall. He wanted to play. He ain't been healthy in two two and a half years. He wanted to play. They sat him down. Then he was like, "All right, well, trade me. I go to I go to the Lakers, but they they wouldn't put a trigger on the Westwood trade." Right or vice versa, maybe the Lakers wouldn't put a trigger on it, but there was trade talks. John Wall was ready to play; he wanted to play. They sat him down, so you can't use that as an example of players uh, getting paid and sitting out. Uh, you know, just because they wanted to sit out. Ben Simmons—that's a different story. You can use that example. 
right? He said, I didn't want to play for Philly no more. All right, cool. Uh, James Harden forced his way out of Houston and forced his way out of uh, Brooklyn Nets. But y'all applauded him for that. Hey, man, you should leave Brooklyn and Kyrie. I applaud. They they applauded him for uh, requesting a trade to go to Philly and get out of Brooklyn, right? And and then the, the Kyrie example, look, he was ready to play as well. That was about the vaccination. He said, I'm not putting that in my body. He still could have played uh, 41 games. They suspended him. So you, you, you got examples, Kyrie and John Wall. These are the teams deciding to sit these players. So yeah, you still got to honor your contract. You, you and, and, but matter of fact, uh, the forty-one games that Kyrie was suspended for, he didn't get paid for. So I mean, so it don't make sense when you really break it down one by one on what he's saying. But he's been saying it for a year and a half. The players are going to get killed in the CBA. The owners always try to kill the players in the CBA. Always. That's why it always ends up in, in, in lockouts uh, almost every time. Right? They always try to get over on the players. What Stephen A. Smith is doing is conditioning the public so they can be on air on the owner's side. So he's helping the owners manhandle the players. And he's trying to use any type of evidence to throw out there to make it seem like it's, it, it's the players. I mean come on man like it's 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 obvious man and and before i even get out of here i just want to show you man the way the owners treat him the way people treat him at espn they know they know he's their uh their uh step and fetch boy they know he is man and he knows it and everybody else around him knows it. that's why a lot of people don't respect him a lot of analysts don't respect him if you if you go around everybody that was at espn that got fired Ask them about Stephen A. Smith. It don't matter if it's Michelle Beadle. It don't matter if it's uh, uh, Jason Whitlock. It don't matter if it's whoever it is. They're not going to have a positive uh, opinion about Stephen A. Kerry Champion, all of them. They're not. They're not. Just just, just Google it, YouTube it, and, 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 and Jamil Hill, all of them. They'll tell you. They'll tell you what he's all about. They'll tell you what he's all about. But but his, his first day back to first take, uh, I, it was very interesting because, um, what is it? Uh, when did or when do you feel like Stephen A. made this transition? Man, um, that's a good question. Um, um, I don't know. I, I don't know as far as behind the scenes because the the way the way the people that i just named that used to work at espn they say he's always been like that right um but i i, I want to say the first time he got in trouble with espn and got suspended when he made the comments about women because i think stephen a smith made a mistake of thinking that he was so talented that he had the uh the freedom to speak his mind um because he would speak his mind and and you know with fire when it comes to certain players like you know he you know he went at stefan marbury pretty hard big dog glenn robinson uh kwame brown uh you know Roger nosterovich guys like that he went at them hard and it, it, you know it was kind of entertaining it was kind of comedic right and it worked for him so i think he made the mistake of thinking I'm Stephen A. Smith. I'm a big guy at ESPN. I'm on TV. People listen to me. I'm loud. And he thought that he had freedom to say whatever. So when he when the Ray Rice situation happened and he came out and tried to speak up and say, I think he said something along the lines of women got to watch themselves putting their hands on men as well, which is which is understandable. That is a true statement. Right. I don't want nobody putting their hands on their uh, on on, the, on their spouse or or anybody else, especially when it's of the opposite sex. I don't want a man touching a woman in that way or hitting a woman, and vice versa, right? So I guess it was the wrong time for him to bring that up. Maybe he was supposed to be just sensitive to what happened and not you know to the female and not even mention that hey she was hitting on him too, right? Uh, but he said something along that line and it did not go well. ESPN was 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 catching heat. 
I don't know if they got to the point where they was losing sponsors and all that stuff, but you know, it was a threat. They didn't like it. And they suspended Stephen A. Smith. Then they brought him back, made him come on and do a public apology. They had females on the uh on the set with him while he was doing an apology. It was it was just a whole dog and pony show, right? So right when that happened, he realized he wasn't untouchable and invincible. And he started towing the line a little bit more. He started realizing what he can and can't say. Hey, I can say whatever I want about these players that get out of line because I got the backing of ESPN and and the leagues. You know, I'm saying what the leagues would would say if they could if they could say it. Right. So that's why I say he's a, a voice and a sounding board for the owners, because now he started saying what the owners was thinking or either what the owners was telling him behind closed doors. He started saying it publicly. The owners can't come out and say some of these things. He was saying it. So when a per- person like Kyrie Irving say, I'm not getting vaccinated and the league is saying, look, man, we, we need all our players vaccinated so we can have this season. And if someone as important as Kyrie don't get vaccinated, more people might follow suit. We got to we got to make an example out of him, but we can't legally do it as a league because we don't have a policy against being unvaccinated. Right. So how can what what can what what can we use to put pressure on the players? Well, we got this platform at ESPN that reaches millions of people every day. And so when you get a Stephen A. Smith and a lot of other analysts go on ESPN and start coming at Kyrie every day like that and you and you hearing it every day. And millions of people are hearing it every day. Now you go to every social media site. What you can even go to Man Down and watch what Stephen A. Smith says about Kyrie on ESPN gets repeated by people that watch Stephen A. Smith. Right? He's shaping and molding opinions. That's a powerful platform that he's on. ESPN is a powerful platform with a lot of reach. Right? And the NBA, and the NBA knows that. NBA, NFL knows that. Right? So if we if we got if is if ESPN is our, our partners, right? Who at ESPN uh, are we going to be able to use as a as a pawn or a puppet? And and right now Stephen A. and you only need to uh, pay one of them because he's showing the rest of them what is possible for them if they get in line. So it just trickles down. What Stephen A. Smith says gets repeated through all the other shows on ESPN and I, I I just don't see a lot of people that are giving any type of pushback and if they do give any type of pushback it's all a performance right because I remember when Stephen A. Smith first got rid of uh, Max Kellerman and his ratings dropped uh, they was trying to figure out ways to get their ratings back up and the perfect thing had happened Kyrie was going through this situation with the Vax and then they got Jason Williams on there and it was a back and forth that Stephen A. Smith and Jason Williams had on that particular topic. And they got their ratings back up and they 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 went to the well for that two, three weeks in a row. Like, you know, once they found Jay Will, oh man, because what happened was we all got fooled because we feel like, oh man, somebody finally telling Stephen A. Smith like it is. This is what I would say to his face if I was uh close to him. And Jason Williams is, is saying it. So people start tuning in just to see Stephen A. get towed off. But Stephen A. is smart. He knows people watch for that back and forth. So it was just a dog and pony show. Look, look, look at how J. Will and Stephen A is now when they get on the set together. They they say the same exact things. You know, uh they they they're on the same page now. So to answer the question, that was the long rate uh to answer your question, but to answer your question, I think once Stephen A. Smith uh found out what he could and couldn't say and what what demographics was protected and what which ones what weren't protected and then he found out his bosses i mean he and he said this man he wake up every day and his first thought is how can i make my bosses more money and how can i get some of it that's his quote right uh when he found out oh man if i make my bosses happy that's going to be good for me that's when he went right out i mean that's when he went in and uh the 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 first big thing that happened was the kaepernick thing right he was on the side of the league right um you know he'll try to tiptoe a little bit but he was on the side of the league against Kaepernick right uh so when when it's very important things like that the league's gonna need him to speak up and and say the things that uh they want the public to know uh that's gonna help the league out they, he's he's not he's not gonna go on there and say nothing that's gonna go against the league um so that's when uh that's how it was. I want to say right after Stuart Scott passed. It's possible. 
Hit <laughs> right before Skip left. What's up, Bird? Yep, yep. What's up, Matthew? Uh, Stephen A. Smith also had something to say about Shohei Otani. Yeah, and I covered it. I got a video on it. I got a video on it, and and um, but but he found out real quick that the Japanese community and the Asian community was not going for it. And when the Japanese and the Asian community, uh, you know, uh, caused the wreckage about that ESPN had to do something about it. And that's, that's another apology. He had to go on. They had, they had a full segment dedicated, uh, to doing damage control on that. Um, they had, uh, one of the Asian and they, I think they had, uh, the female Asian, I can't remember her name, but it was a male Asian uh, Asian guy that uh, um, uh, all employee. I, I think that uh, journalist. Uh, I'm not sure if they work for ESPN, but they was on the show that day, and it was. I mean, it was embarrassing. I mean, like they they talked to Stephen A. Smith like he was a child. Man, he he couldn't do nothing but sit there and take it because the bosses was like, "You gonna make this right? You you upset the wrong community, right?" Uh, so uh, we've seen we've seen if if he crossed the line with women apology tour he crossed the line with the asian community apology tour but we haven't seen the the black male demographic get any apologies I, I, and the the same the same month that he offended the asian community uh with his comments about otani otani uh was the same month that uh he offended the african uh, uh demographic because they had uh just beat the USA Olympic basketball team uh, in the exhibition match, or was it a, a qualifying match? They beat the US, and he gets on air and just embarrassed. I can't believe you lost to Africa, and he just started pronouncing like African names wrong on purpose. Like you know, I mean, who the hell is uh, blah blah blah? Just saying these, just blurting out these African names all disrespectfully, and saying them wrong on purpose and laughing like who? How did you lose to these guys? Right. That happened in the same month, but there was no apology tour for the Africans that he offended, and there was plenty of outlash and people saying um, they dislike what he said and they asked for an apology. They didn't get it, right? So, um, yeah. So, I mean, you just got to think. I mean, he's on the side with the league. He's gonna say what the league and what ESPN wants him to say, and if he has to apologize to somebody, he'll do it. But if the if the ESPN or the league don't tell him to apologize to nobody, he's not gonna do it. Just like when he slipped up and said the N word on air uh, uh, two months ago, no apology. No, no apology, man. <laughs> yeah, but um, let me let me let me let me play how they received him back to first take uh his first day back after his shoulder surgery um and i mean like who else gets this type of treatment i don't i don't even remember them doing nothing for Stuart scott's uh birthday this year or nothing like that they didn't even do nothing for kobe bryant's birthday uh, a week ago right um but um that you know for some reason adam silver who is the nba commissioner and joe lacob who's the owner of the golden state warriors you know decided they you know they had to say something to Stephen a on his first day back after his uh surgery they love him man uh listen to it. i can't show you the video because they you know the channel had to get demonetized but i i'll play the audio though Stephen a i know that you and the media expect complete transparency from the nba particularly when it comes to injuries but i get it shoulder surgery that's all we're told. Definitely a different standard when it comes to the media. Nevertheless, we're thrilled you're back and I'm glad your shoulder surgery was perfectly timed for the off season. And good news, opening night will be here before you know it. Joe, wake up, first take is on. Uh, go away. Stephen A is back. He's back? Stephen A is back, he's the only one that believed in us. Welcome back, Stephen A. <laughs> hey they love him man that's a that's the the nba's commissioner and the owner of the golden state warriors 
who have just won the championship and probably got a dynasty and, and one of the best franchises in the league. They thought it enough to to show up. You know, the, you know, they poke fun at them a little bit, man. But I mean, they uh, who else? What what other employee at ESPN get that type of treatment? They love this dude, man. And and that type of love don't come because he's just a good friend. That that type of love come because look, man, you work for us, bro. You do you do what we need you to do. You say what we need you to say. I think it's disgusting, man. I really I really do, man. I uh like you know, I I, I don't know it. I don't know what he's trying to push as far you know because he's not a journalist anymore so you know he don't he don't have to have journalistic integrity he don't he don't have to abide by those guidelines like you know so he's not doing that uh i guess you can say he's an entertainer you know because i don't know if the word analyst even matches anymore what they doing with these debate shows like there's no analyst um shannon sharp is not an analyst i don't know what he is i I think they're just entertainment now like this is this is i mean disney owns espn now so who knows what their goal is i it's just entertainment at this point so i don't even think you can take anything they say at face value and 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 look at it as truth right i think it's all entertainment right I, I don't I don't even know if he says what his true feelings is anymore, man. It's just it's just like I got a job to do, uh, I got an agenda to push, and and that's what I'm gonna do. And the NBA commissioner and the NBA owners know it. So I just want y'all to keep y'all eye on and listen to Stephen A. Smith in that light, uh, and just know that look what he's saying is probably coming from the owners when when it comes to 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 the the real important issues. You know, it, you know the small stuff in between that man. It might be his own personality, but he knows when it comes to the big issues, like uh, you know, vaccine, um, players demanding trades. You know, especially in the NBA. I don't know so much for the NFL, but NBA. You know, the things that's going on in the NBA. When it comes to those things, when Stephen A. talks about those big issues, just know he's going to say what's in the best interest of the team owners, the league, and ESPN right just keep that in mind man but that's it man i was already too i was supposed to, this was supposed to be a 15 minute uh video man so my my apologies man for making it so long but i appreciate y'all checking me in i got a couple of people in here and i don't see that many likes so make sure you hit the like button if you're watching from facebook you definitely should be watching from youtube but i appreciate you on facebook anyway but hit that like button uh uh make sure you subscribe on youtube if you haven't already subscribed and then i check y'all out on the next broadcast man peace